this is Frank Fantini, and we are here with Harold Neumann, who's the CEO of Novomatic. And uh, Harold, Novomatic is one of the largest and most diversified gaming companies in the world. And yet, because it has a relatively small US presence, it's not known to many Americans. Uh, can you give us a little profile of your company? Yes. Uh, Novomatic was founded in 1980 by Professor Graf, which is still the sole shareholder of Novomatic. That means we are a private health company. Uh, we are employing more than 25,000 people worldwide, and we make a, in, a group, in our group we make a turnover of 4 billion euro. Uh, we are following what we are calling a, a, a dual strategy. That means we are a full service provider on the one side for all kind of gaming technology, land-based and online. And, and this is, uh, I would say, unique in this, in this uh, gaming era, we are operating more than 1,500 gaming locations in mainly in Europe, from large casino to, to, to single site uh, operations. So this is also a strength because this is a kind of learning process from, from both sides and brings a lot of synergies. Uh, we have more than 1,300 software developers in uh, nearly 13 uh, software centers. So uh, of course we are, let's say, Europe is our biggest and strongest market and we are focused on Europe and uh, especially with the Ainsworth acquisition, US is a huge opportunity for us and uh, I hope this will change that in a few years everybody will know Novomatic here. Right. Uh, you, uh, your company established a US headquarters several years ago yes. um, and it's now based I guess in Chicago, Rick Meitzer. It is based in right. Chicago, yes. Uh, and you're about to make a really big change because you are acquiring 53% ownership of Ainsworth, yes. which is increasingly becoming an American company yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about the purchase of Ainsworth and what that will mean for your expansion in North America and maybe also its aspect of the gaming industry. Look, I think it was quite interesting when we, when we came to the US, uh, we recognized that the US is a completely different market than, than Europe. I, I think US is, is uh, the players are female dominated, you have less volatility, you have a lot of features, uh, it's more time on device in comparison to, to Europe. So we had to learn a lot about, about the market, which took some time. Then you have, of course, you have these this very time-consuming license procedures here. Uh, but I would say we, we, we made our homework and, and at this show we are showing more than, than 40 new dedicated to the US uh, gaming titles. Uh, so I think this is something which, is, which, is, which took, unfortunately, more time than we have expected. Ainsworth, I think this is an, what you already said, it's an established company here. They are selling more than 3,000 gaming machines per year. They have, a, they have the headquarter here in Nevada. So this is bringing an, an, another, uh, let's say, uh, strong uh, power to, to, to Novomatic. And I think the combination between Novomatic and Ainsworth, I think it's very promising for, the, for us and, and for the US market. Right, and we know that Danny Glantz, uh, Gladstone at uh, Ainsworth is, is excited about this. Uh, I hope. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as you had mentioned, you're a privately owned company. You can't get more private than a single individual who owns the company. That's right. Uh, yet Ainsworth is a publicly traded company. Yes. So this will create for the first time a lot of um, uh, disclosure requirements and other regulatory yes. re requirements that Novomatic perhaps hasn't faced before. Uh, and I know that you are aware of that. Uh, how do you think that might affect Novomatic? I mean, do you feel comfortable in that public arena? Look, uh, first we have already a, a lot of experience in this, in this financial market as we issued several bonds. Most recently we issued a bond of uh, two weeks ago of 500 million euro. So we are more or less used to the, to the, to the this procedure in this in this public uh, area, but of course uh, it's it's something which we have to. I think when we had all this discussion, we need to take over phase with the financial analysts. So I think we could learn a lot. Yeah, 
Uh, on the other side, we are already licensed in, in more than 20 jurisdictions in the US, in, in Asia, in Canada. So I think we are used to it. Uh, so it's not completely new, but uh, we have seen during these this, this negotiations with the anal analyst that there is, let's say, a, a new yeah, a new style of communication uh, coming uh, to us. Right. Now, Professor Groff, yeah. um, he's owned this company for a long time, since the beginning, um, and everything changes. Uh, is there a point at time where maybe Novomatic itself sees a benefit in being a public company? So we have no plans currently, but I would say never say never again, so it could happen. But once again, there's, there, there, there are no plans we have. Fortunately, we have we are, we are financed well, so for all the acquisitions which are in front of us, we have our we have enough money. As you mentioned, Novomatic is a very diverse company, and we're at a stage of development in the gaming industry. There are new forms of gaming are emerging. You've got esports. Uh, we have virtual sports, which have uh, been around for a while, but are actually just coming now coming into the U.S. We have a possibility for virtual reality. We have skill-based gaming being developed. Uh, does Novomatic have plans to play in any of those arenas? Look, with this, uh, I think this AWP market in, in Europe, there are some skill elements in it. So we are used to this. Uh, we have GreenTube, which is a, a, a leading online platform for real money and social. Uh, gaming, we most recently developed one of the most sophisticated social gaming platforms for Foxwood and we could get uh, the first three months more than 10,000 uh, subscribers, so quite successful start. Uh, regarding uh, this, this eSports and, and, and virtual gaming, this is something which we want to look at. Uh, mm -hmm. Currently in the, in the sports betting, we are rolling out mainly in Europe our sports betting solutions. So that's, that, that's currently our strategy. Everything that is related to this virtual and, and uh, we are still waiting a little bit. Uh, Novomatic has grown over the years through acquisition, a lot of acquisitions. I, yes. I assume that's still part of your, yes. your mode of operation. Yes, I think we will, uh, we have reached and I think there was a strategy two, three years ago to become the number one or number two in each of the key markets in Europe, which we have more or less reached. We will further concentrate on the key market like uh, UK, Germany, Italy, Spain, Central Eastern Europe, both by acquisitions and by, by, by organic growth. Uh, when folks here at G2E go to your exhibit, yeah. what should they look for? I think there are some, some interesting attractions. One is the, this world champion of slots, which we have which Gary Hunt has produced. So that's quite an interesting and, and, and uh, challenging uh, part of our, of our show. We have, we, have, we, sh we have shown, or we are showing here the first time, the Gaminator Scorpion, which is the key product for the international market. Uh, what I have already mentioned, we are showing, new f we are showing 40 new uh, software titles dedicated for the US market, developed in cooperation between Europe and our and our software team here in Illinois. And we are also showing with uh, Tales of Darkness, one of linked progressive jackpot, which is also uh, new and of course, uh, which is also a, could be an interesting market for us. We are showing our uh, lottery technology here. So that's the main attractions. Great. Uh, anything else you want folks to know about Novomatic? Mm, no, I would say I have I've mentioned the most important. You, you've covered a lot of ground in a short time. I uh, hope. Harold, thank you very much. It's Thanks very so interesting. Thank you.